Mr. Fitness, baby! Boom! Mr. Fitness 2.0, yeah! United States Navy, back, boom! What's going on, guys? Uh, yep, I apologize. Uh, for what it is, I haven't put out a video in a couple weeks, because I've been working some awesome, like, 12, 13, 14 hour days on board the ship. So, for you YouTube subscribers, YouTube family out there, I apologize, but we're back this week, and I'll get uh, try to do the best I can to get a double dose. All right. So anyway, so to make up Friday Q and A, a little late, but better late than never, right? I just dropped that. This is live. Ah, screw it, we'll do it live. Oh, like the little O'Reilly thing. Um. Okay, so from Trey in Louisiana, he says, "I'm having trouble developing my calves." Um, would you recommend training them every day? Would it be a good idea? Um, Trey, I can tell you calves, um, calves have a lot to do with genetics. Um, if you watch uh, one of my other videos I put out really about the biceps, it's kind of the same thing with the origin and insertion of the muscle. If you have a very high insertion point on your calves, then obviously there's not quite as much, um, quite as much tissue there for growth. Um, however, I mean, you know, you can always do things to work around that. What actually worked for me, I always used to train calves only one day a week, really heavy. And then, uh, that was when I was really young in my training career. But, um, what actually worked for me, bring it up, do one heavier day on, um, maybe a seated calf press. So, uh, working more the, I guess the gastrocnemius, if I'm correct. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. When you're seated, I believe... Knee, with the knee bent, you're working more of the gastrocnemius muscle, and with the leg straight, like a standing calf raise, you're working more of the soleus. So maybe I would do two really hard training sessions on your calves a week instead of working them every day. I think working them every day is going to be overkill. The calves are a muscle just like anything else. If you work them every single day and then ever get a chance to recover, really, um, I don't know if that would be most beneficial. Here's my advice really quick. Um, one day, a uh, heavier rep range, maybe, uh, say, anywhere between 6 to 12, on a seated calf raise and maybe do, you know, maybe do like five, five, six sets uh, on one day and then maybe two to three, two or two to four days later uh, do a standing calf or a straight leg calf movement. Uh, maybe perform that in a little bit higher rep range. And that's something that I did and experimented with a while back and that seemed to work pretty well for me. Um, you're just, main, bottom line, you're taxing the muscle from a kind of a different perspective. Um, two different rep ranges with two different positions on it. So um, give that a shot. See if it works for you. Um, but it helped me. So lagging calves, try that out. Um, nutrition from Roger in PA, Pennsylvania. He says, cheat meals versus cheat days. What are your thoughts? Um, another thing I can use myself as an example. Well, because I just know it all, don't I? Mr. Fitness knows it all. No, but I can I use myself as an example on this as well. Um, cheat meals versus cheat days. I used to do cheat days, also once again when I was younger, but I also used to be a lot more stocky. So I really don't advise doing cheat days unless you're just really one of those hard gainers. I mean, you know for a fact you have a really fast resting metabolism and you have it. You have trouble putting on weight. Um, that's the only way I recommend doing cheat days because you can put down a lot of calories in a day. I mean, if you just throw a whole 24 hour period, three sheets to the wind, you can do some damage, man. So I really don't recommend doing cheat days unless you're a hard gainer. Cheat meal, however, very good. I, I like to incorporate one cheat meal and those of you that may not know, a cheat meal just means you're not keeping track of anything. Like if you're on some sort of a structured nutrition regimen, you have one meal every, say, you know, one to two weeks, anywhere from five to 14 days, one meal where you just go nuts. Uh, what I like to do is actually try to plan this around social events. Maybe on a Saturday night, you're going out with friends, going to have some drinks, have some shitty food to go with it. 
you know, whatever. Or, I mean, if you just want to take it at your leisure, but I recommend just doing one cheat meal every, you know, anywhere between 5 to 14 days, depending on, you know, depending on your goals at any given time. Obviously, if you're in a fat loss phase, you want to be a little bit more conservative with it. Um, if you're on maintenance or you're trying to gain weight even, then, yeah, you can be a little bit more, um, a little more liberal with it. So, uh, yeah, cheat meal uh, is what I recommend. I don't recommend doing cheat days. So. Um, but once again, it, it's it's individual with with the person as well. So. But that's it. Uh, fun fact: WTFFunFact.com. Due to new discovery of brain parasites, scientists say that a zombie apocalypse is possible. Kudos to them, man! I tell you what, it's gonna happen. I got my uh, bug out bag and my zombie survival kit on standby because. Uh, I don't think the uh, end of the world is going to be some sort of, uh, uh, well, who knows, but uh, definitely zombie apocalypse. It, yeah, I, I'm a believer, man. It's going to happen. World War Z, it's going to happen. Um, that's it. Uh, Mr. Fetch's 2.0, yeah, United States Navy, Friday Q&A. Oh, it's late, but it's better late than never. Six-minute abs, cheat meals, not cheat days, and lagging calves. Oh, yeah, two days a week. Two different exercises, two different rep ranges. Give that a shot. See how it works for you. Email eric.downing28 gmail.com. Follow, subscribe, like, share, comment, all that stuff. Yeah, baby. Six-minute abs. United States Navy. Boom.